Hi everyone, this is Professor Golestane. I'd like to show you the apparatus equipment necessary for doing the freezing point determination of a solution. And I have a hot plate and a magnetic stirrer, uh, which I'm not going to use the hot plate for. I'm not going to use the heat part. I'm, I'm going to use the stirrer, magnetic stirrer. I have a little stir bar inside of this little test tube. And uh, you can see that the function of this stair bar is to mix the solution. My solution will be inside of that test tube. And while it's freezing, it would be mixing. So it is going to be spinning like that at a relatively high speed. And it would be perfectly mixed while it's freezing. So this is one aspect of it. I have a beaker which I'm going to put ice and salt in with a little bit of water which maintains a very cold condition and it's going to be in here so as I lower my test tube it's going to go inside of this beaker and uh, this part of the test tube will the lower part will get cooled down by the mixture of ice salt and water and I have some ice here ready for that and I'm going to use just regular salt here. This is household commercial salt, uh, Norton salt. And uh, I also have a scale which I'm going to use for measuring the mass of the, of the salt. Now I'm going to use a more pure version of the salt. This is sodium chloride in a more pure way. The commercial salt has some impurities in it. To make it flow better, they have an and they add an anti-caking caking agent to it, and it's called calcium silicate. I don't know if you can read that, but calcium silicate is an anti-caking agent, which helps the salt flow relatively easy. But when you dissolve the salt in water, you get a, a hazy-looking solution uh, because the calcium silicate is insoluble. So I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use this salt right here. So that's the process. Right, let's go ahead and get my ice water salt mixture back. So I have some ice here. So let's just transfer some here. This is a pretty large size ice. I hope it works. And I'm going to put some salt over it. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm eyeballing this process. So I'm just going to pour some salt here. And when you put salt over ice, you lower the sort of the same experiment we're doing, but in a more pronounced way. Uh, quantities are larger. So notice as soon as I added uh, the ice, uh, I added the salt to the ice, you can see that now it's starting to melt. It's kind of cool because it lowers the freezing point. The salt water mixture would have a very low freezing point of roughly like negative 12, 13. That's what I'm hoping to achieve. It might even get lower than that. So uh, by just adding the salt to the water, to the ice, you're melting it. This is what they do in uh, very cold uh, places where it snows or there is frozen condition of roads in winter times. There, there are trucks that go by and they add salt to the ice and they melt the ice so it would create a safe driving condition. They usually don't add uh, sodium chloride. I think they add calcium chloride. So usually ionic salts do a good job. So you can see now I'm starting to, there is like melted salt water mixture. So it's getting cold to touch. So the temperature even drops below freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius. So I have this now in order to make this a little bit more of a mixture. I'm just going to add some more water to it. Let's go ahead and I might need more ice. We'll see. Okay. So you can see now that the temperature of the bath, this is our temperature one. The temperature of the bath is dropping. So it's gone down to negative 1.1 degrees Celsius. The first line is the first, uh, this probe right here. So I'm going to add a little bit more ice to it. 
So I'm just going to grab some more ice. Okay, this is good. Now for my first experiment, I'm going to just freeze some pure water for you. So you can see the freezing point of the solvent. We expect this to be around zero degrees Celsius. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And in every experiment, I'm going to measure out eight milliliters of the solution. This is my uh, graduated cylinder. So I'm going to pour in eight milliliters. So now my next thing would be to put my thermometer inside. This is my temperature probe that sits in this way. And the probe is connected to the computer as I showed you. So right now a little bit more salt here to even bring it to a lower temperature. So this process takes a lot of salt. Maybe I'll empty out the water a little bit and put some more ice. Soon you're going to see frost on the outside of the beaker. Okay, this should work. We have now negative 7 degrees Celsius. Oops, my cord is blocking the view. So, we'll go ahead and insert this. Let me remove this thermometer for a second. Oops. Put it over here for now. Okay, everything is going good. The, the spinner is turning and uh, I have my second thermometer in. Make sure that my ice water mixture is good. So the temperature, the second temperature is the temperature of the uh, pure water right now. And the stirrer is, I can see it, I don't think you can see it, but I can see it turning well. So my bath is pretty cold. And um, when I dismantle this, I'm not going to uh, have this go on for much longer because you get the idea. You saw the constant temperature zone, and now we are dropping the uh, 
temperature down so it's getting to its old solid phase right now which is ice and it's getting colder and colder all right so I'm going to remove this and I'm going to stop right here you had enough of the, the data so I'm going to remove this setup let's turn off the stair stair isn't moving anyway and so I can show you what's going on all right so you can see this is the frozen piece right here so I'm going to start to warm it because I need to remove this so you can see that this is all frozen there's a portion that's starting to melt from the top and this is my stuck stirrer that's at the bottom so the ice the, the, the ice started to form from the bottom it stopped the, the stir from moving and then started to come back on top because it's colder in the bottom like I'll continue to monitor my ice bath temperature all right so we did this right here so here it is so you can see the piece of ice it's pretty cool taking the shape of my test tube now I have to get this out so I think I'll just I don't know break it off or something maybe I'll just put some water away okay we now need to do an experiment uh, involving the freezing of the solvent only the solvent and in this experiment we're going to just study freezing of water pure water and i'm going to have i'm going to I'm measuring eight milliliters which i did for every run i'm going to measure eight milliliters of the of the solution so there is eight milliliters of pure water that goes into this apparatus and i have an ice uh, salt water bath that's already at negative eight degrees which is pretty good and so let's go ahead and put that in here and we're going to insert our thermometer into the solution I'm getting the magnetic stirrer running. The solution should be mixed. So it's mixing well. Negative eight degrees, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and collect our data. So there's the solution going through cooling. But it is not freezing yet. I don't see any ice particles forming yet. Even though my bad temperature is negative 8. And you can see that the solution temperature is negative or the water temperature is negative 2. But it's still there's no ice. So this is the phenomena that we refer to as super cooling phenomena. The water keeps cooling below its freezing and it doesn't turn into ice crystals because there's no seeding effect. You need tiny particles for ice to form on and or impurities or dust particles or whatever uh, and it's not there so it's a clean container. Uh, I think I see something happening. Uh, yeah, I see ice crystals happening. So there is the super cooling. Now it's starting to freeze. And the freezing temperature should be pretty close to zero degrees. Now I don't see my stirrer moving it anymore, which means it's, it's gotten frozen. So the temperature would remain at 0.1, negative 0.1, which is pretty close to zero. And that's the freezing temperature of water.
pretty constant temperature so we can actually take this off and let it melt so here's the ice this part is completely frozen this is the part that takes it taking longer to freeze and that's why the temperature is remaining at zero degrees as you see now only because it's this part so as long as you have the ice water mixture you essentially have a zero degree temperature there see the ice crystals and water and ice 